In this video, we will be looking at how to turn a very boring and ordinary looking shot of a pastry into something much more cinematic and creating an entire video ad from it using mainly two tools, which are going to be Flux Context and Kling AI. So let's see the process involved in this. As I've shown in a couple of my videos, when I'm turning images into uh, sort of a video, then I like to use this seven step process that you can see in front of you, which starts off first of all with a script and creating a visual storyboard from that script. Both these steps are done inside ChatGPT. Once you're happy with the storyboard, we start to get the prompts or generate the prompts for these different frames in that storyboard. Either you can generate the images inside ChatGPT itself, but in this tutorial, we are going to be using for the next step Flux context simply because Flux is very good at maintaining the consistency. So even if we get that first shot correct, we can simply keep editing the shot to change the angles and composition within Flux. So we don't need to then generate the prompts for each frame. Once we have our images with us, we move on to the next step where we're going to get the prompts to turn these images into videos. And then finally, we will turn them into videos and put them together in an editing software to get the final result. So let's see this entire process. First of all, things began in ChatGPT, where I basically just talked to ChatGPT about the script. So I want to create a professional video of a pastry, which is a cinematic slow motion video of some sweet toppings falling and all these things. And then on a very brief way, I just mentioned the different shots that I had in my mind. And I asked to create a visual storyboard with these frames. And it gave me something like this. Now this was not on the first try. Sometimes you will get storyboards that you don't like. So this was on the third try that I got this particular storyboard. Another one that I got where it kind of created some kind of a sketch instead of a image like this was this one. And I was happy with both, but ultimately I chose this one. So our first two steps were done at this point. Then I again use ChatGPT to basically get the prompts that will be used inside Flux context. So let me show you how I did that also. So the next thing I did was I basically uploaded two images inside ChatGPT. The first image was the image of our own pastry that will ultimately be needed instead of just the reference pastry that was there in the storyboard. So you upload this one and you upload the storyboard also. And then I just wrote a simple prompt, which is I've attached an image of the original shot of the pastry and also a storyboard, which has the different frames. Uh, which will be ultimately generated into videos. So start creating the prompts for the first frame in the storyboard, but the details should be of the original pastry, uh, which is there in the uploaded image, because obviously the toppings and everything is different. So then it gave me this very detailed prompt for the first frame. And this is all we need. We didn't, we don't really need the prompts for the other frames, because as you're going to see inside flux context, if we get the first image, which is correct, we can simply generate more images from it by changing the composition as it's very consistent. The only thing was in this first frame prompt that it had given me, I just noticed when I went through it, it did not mention uh, these toppings falling in the uh, from the air onto the pastry. So I just said, uh, mention that the topping should also be falling onto the pastry as can be seen in the first frame of that storyboard. And ultimately this was the prompt that I got. Then it was time to move on to the flux playground where we will be using flux context to generate all these frames. So this is the flux playground, which is perhaps the most affordable way to use flux context. And when you create your account, you also get 200 free credits. So you can create 50 images because it takes four credits per edit. If you haven't seen my video where I explained how to access it and how to use it in detail, then you can watch this video where I showed how to create consistent characters using flux context, where even the playground was explained in detail. I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video also. But right now the job is very simple. We already have our prompt for that first frame. So I'm just going to paste it here. In the reference image, we're going to put the image of our original pastry. So this is also done now. We're going to select Flux Context Pro as of now when it comes to the model. And when it comes to the settings here, we are assuming that we are making this video, let's say for Instagram. So we're going to select an aspect ratio for an Instagram reel, which is nine is to 16. And I'm going to go for two variations. So that will cost me eight credits. There's no need to go for four. You can save some credits and you can leave everything as it is. And the only thing that now we're looking for is that first shot should look nice. If we get that, it's going to be very easy as you're going to see to create the rest of the shot. So let's just wait for uh, these two results here. 
All right, so you can see that this doesn't look bad at all, but for some reason it didn't give me that cinematic look. So I can always, this is the advantage of Flux Context, that when you open up any sort of an image that you get, you can just hit the edit option here, and you can just, you know, tell it to basically change it in any way that you want. Whenever you're editing, always make sure that you select the batch size again to one so that you don't waste credits, and you can leave everything as it is, and I can just, uh, you know, ask it to change the lighting. So make it darker and more cinematic. And let's see the result here. So you can see that this time, just by writing that single prompt, we have been able to make it really, really nice. And it will, your first image, it'll just require a bit of trial and error. Maybe sometimes you can even go back to chat GPT, modify the prompt a bit, maybe ask it to change the uh, texture on the table and all these things. But finally, when I did all these things, this was the image that I finally got. And let me show you now, from here on, how did I edit things? So the editing process went something like this. If you go back to the storyboard, the next frame was something similar, but it was a close up, right? So all I did was using this first image, again, just hit the edit button. Since Flux maintains that consistency, all I have to just type in is that zoom more in towards the pastry or zoom more into the pastry, basically go closer the pastry so that we get a same composition but it's just that side slightly more zoomed in so we can see those uh, toppings well again remember always change this because this resets that's one problem here so one variation should be fine and just like that you're going to see that then we don't need a detailed prompt again from chat gpt to keep on getting all those frames because we do this and most probably you can see that this is absolutely perfect it just maintains the consistency so well from here to here that you don't need prompting again and this right now is only possible via flux context then i just kept on following the similar procedure now you take this becomes your next image to get the uh, next frame which was like a really macro close-up of the toppings so again you can do the same thing again so you can say extreme macro close-up of the toppings and again make sure this is set to one it's already this time there and then you just hit generate. And just like this, you basically keep on generating till the time you have all the required frames with you. So let's just see the result here. Hopefully this should also be good. And you can see this is absolutely perfect. So I kept on following the same procedure till the time I had all the images with me. So let's have a look at these images. You can see all these images in front of you. The next task was to simply now put all these inside Kling and turn them into videos. So the first thing I did was I went over to ChatGPT and I uploaded all these five shots here. And I just said, these are the five shots I've created. Create prompts to turn each of them into a video in Kling AI. The first two frames where the toppings are dropping onto the pastry should be in slow motion. The rest of the ones I'm leaving up to you. So I just left the motion up to ChatGPT. And for each shot, it started giving me these detailed prompts that I could have used in uh, Kling. So then I went over to Kling AI and here the job was pretty easy. All we had to do was just use the image to video feature inside the video generation feature. I selected Kling 2.1 uh, version for most of the shots that you're going to be seeing simply because after a lot of people complained that this was too costly, Kling in the recent days actually reduced the credit usage for 2.1 and made it similar to the older 1.6 model, which is 30, uh, which is 35 credit. So now we can definitely use Kling 2.1 for each of these generations. So I uploaded each of those frames and copied the prompt that ChatGPT had given. So let me show you some of the results here. So you can see here, this was the prompt from ChatGPT. This was the image and let's see the result. And you can see this was really, really nice. Similarly, I went for the next close-up shot that we had created. Again, the prompt from ChatGPT and this was the result. This time, even the plate was moving in a circular way. Looked really, really nice. This was a zoom in to the macro shot. I think ChatGPT did a good job with this also. Just a very basic, you know, it's really just maintained that sharpness in those toppings very, very well. So by this time I had three of those. My favorite one was actually the fourth image because the prompt that ChatGPT automatically created for that it resulted in a very cinematic looking shot. However, at this point, actually, I had run out of my credits on Kling. But Kling can also be used on a software like OpenArt. So I'm a paid member of OpenArt. And I can generate the videos using the Kling model here also. So here I went over to videos and basically did the same thing.
So here I selected under videos, the model as Kling 2.1. I again uploaded that same image, the fourth frame this time. And the result that I got from Kling this time was absolutely amazing. You can see here, it just bought in that spotlight, which I think just look really, really cinematic and nice. And just imagine I had nothing to do with this. I had actually, this came from the fact that I had told ChatGPT is up to you. You create the prompt from this frame. So sometimes, you know, that just works well. And by this time, for the final frame, I think I already generated this before that. And I did that inside Kling, which was this particular top view of the pastry. So this was again in Kling. And you can see this was pretty basic, just a moving shot from the top. And this ultimately became the last shot in that video. So now that you've seen all this, let's see this video again. So you can see that it was pretty easy to turn a very boring looking shot into an entire cinematic video. Just imagine doing this by hiring a photographer or even doing this yourself, you know, using all that gear, the camera gear, the lighting gear. If you were to hire someone, it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of time. But right now, all the three tools that I've used here can actually be used for free. Even though I'm on the paid plan of King Le Kling, and let's say it cost me around 300 credits to get all these things done, that's under $5. But doing this in real life would cost way more and would take more time and more effort. So there's no doubt that AI is completely changing the game because now anyone can take up their cell phone, click a normal shot, and then just start to create professional stuff around it. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my AI image and video editing experiments, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.